Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Sports Shift. I'm Rhea Troilo, joined by Brylin Adams. And boy, do we have lots of action, controversy, and a bit of success this week for you. Brylin, start us right off. The Chicago Sky were able to overcome an extremely talented Phoenix Mercury team to win their first WNBA championship. Kalia Cooper, who was born and raised in North Philly, led the Sky with 17 points per game in the finals. Her strength and passion for the game earned her MVP of the tournament. To continue with the girl power, Candace Parker was voted most overrated player by other WNBA players in 2019, and she was benched in an elimination game the same month. Look where she is now. Last year, she won Defensive Player of the Year and now helping Chicago Sky to their first WNBA championship title. Real, wow. what's up next? Look at that, starting from the ground up. Now here's for your controversy. San Jose Sharks forward Evander Kane has been not such a good boy this season. He's now suspended without pay for 21 games by the NHL for violating the league's COVID-19 protocols. Sources confirmed earlier this month Kane was being investigated over submitting a fake COVID-19 vaccination card. The NHL does not have a vaccine mandate for this season. However, vaccinated players have far fewer restrictions on them than unvaccinated players, including the ability to play games in Canada without a mandatory quarantine. This is now Kane's sixth suspension in the league. You would think he might clean up his act after, you would after think. three. <laughs> you would think. But I mean, then again, he's he's not Tom Wilson here. Uh, but but <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, if just get a vaccine. If you're going right. to lie about it, just get a vaccine or don't, whatever, deal with the, just deal with it yeah. at this point, you know. Yeah. He's just I, racking up the points yeah. over here. Ugh. Oh, anyways, um, the postseason for the MLB has brought nothing but excitement. The Houston Astros tied up the ALCS last night against Boston. The Red Sox are winning 2-1 at the top of the eighth, but Jose Altuve hit a game-tying home run and their momentum carried them to a win. Game five is this evening at Fenway Park. The Atlanta Braves, on the other hand, are leading the N NCLS against the LA Dodgers. And the Dodgers clinched their first win of the series last night after being down 5-2 in the bottom of the eighth. The comeback was led by Cody Bellinger's game-tying home run, which was then followed by Mookie Betts' go-ahead go double. The Dodgers look to tie up the series tonight at 8. That's some very exciting uh, playoff baseball going on. Yes, the underdogs will rise. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's a sad thing that the Philadelphia yeah. Phillies cannot be underdogs this season. But with the offseason in full effect, the Phillies have nine players eligible for salary arbitration this offseason, which could move slowly with the current collective bargaining agreement set to expire on December 1st. December 1st is also the deadline for teams to non-tender players on their 40-man roster who have fewer than six years of big league, league service time. And when a team non-tenders a player, he becomes a free agent. Last year, the Phillies could have non-tendered Vince Velasquez and David Hale, but chose instead to re-sign them both. Neither lasted the full season with the Phillies, but with Hale being released in late June and Velasquez the second week of September. This year, the Phillies have a total of nine players eligible for arbitration, including first baseman Reese Hoskins and catcher Andrew Knapp. The Phillies could decide to non-tender as many as five players, but it doesn't mean that they will. Alternatively, they could choose to forgo arbitration process and let Adubal Herrera, Therese, Jankowski, Quinn, or Nat walk. Who would you keep, Rylan? Who made who made kind of the biggest impact on you this year? I know Phillies fans would probably not want to see Reese Hoskins go, for sure. Absolutely. I would definitely agree with that. I would definitely want to keep Reese Hoskins. I know who I would want to go. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of Jankowski just because I feel like okay. he's, um, from whenever I watch a game or the games that I've been to, he's he's kind of messed up in some places right, and I'm right. like, mm. yeah. but then he made up for it. Yeah. So I'm like, oh also, no, that's inconsistent. Also Herrera had a couple of doubts in his like personal mm -hmm. life too, yeah. but 
We shall see. Maybe we'll see. they'll keep them all. Maybe right. they'll get rid of them all. Keep right. some, leave some. But yeah. just for a little bit of context, player salaries increase throughout the arbitration process. Most players go through three years of arbitration, but an additional year of arbitration goes to players with between two and three years in the majors who rank in the top 22 percent of service time among that group. So we shall see what kind of big business moves the Phillies organization will be making this offseason. I know, it should be exciting to see. Um, but it was a really sad day in the city of Philadelphia, especially if you were an Eagles fans a couple days ago. Zach Ertz had officially been traded to the Arizona Cardinals and was extremely emotional to leave the city of Philly behind. Following his last game played with the Eagles last Thursday, he expressed his love for Philly and said, Philly will always be my home. To express his brotherly love to the city, Zach took out an entire full-page thank you note in the Philly Inquirer. Leaving classy, Zach stated, I came here as a kid and leave here a man forever thankful and forever committed to the city. The Ertz Family Foundation is still in the midst of a project with the House of Hope in Philly, and Zach has no intentions of leaving that behind. He is committed to making his mark and finishing this project to help the less fortunate here in Philly. Still doing great things from a distance, which is, that's amazing. Yeah, I love to hear it. Doing the most for the city he loves. His mm -hmm. heart, he said his heart will always be here. And that's something, that's something other than being just a player. Right. That is that emotional presence right. that he had for Philly that mm -hmm. he will always have. He, just by him stating that he was a boy and now he's a man, he's grown. And, you know, some players tend to like leave that behind and, don't remember where they came from, but I think that's something special when someone can hold that close to their heart. Yeah. That reminded me of when P.K. Subban got traded. He did a lot of charity work, and, like, even when he got traded to Nashville, like, that, he he just stayed with it. And I think that's mm -hmm. so thoughtful, and, like, that's just, just like, such a kind thing to do. And yeah. I love that. We love that. Um, but, yeah, moving on, speaking of hockey, wow, great kind, great transition. I yeah, didn't even think about it. Yeah, um, Rhea, <laughs> tell us about the Flyers. Well, after losing their season opener to Vancouver in a shootout last Friday night, the Philadelphia Flyers showed out and made up for it on their home ice against the Seattle Kraken Monday night. They ever so kindly welcomed the newest team into the league with a 6-1 to one victory. Well, there was brawls, there was fights, there was lots of goals. The entire team was clicking from the blue line to the goaltending. It was certainly a scoring parade to say the least. 11 different Flyers recorded at least one point and six scored goals, including newly acquired Derek Broussard and Ryan Ellis. Carter Hart spearheaded the performance with a highlight reel save in the first period against Jordan Everly as the Flyers spoiled Dave Haxtell's return to Philadelphia. And I know it was, I think it was his first time as a head coach to return to Philadelphia. And you want to get that win. Right. You want to get that win against your former team. But the, the Flyers did not let him have it. No. I know Travis Konechny in his um, pregame conference said, I wish the best for Dave Haxall. They loved playing against him. He said, I wish the best of luck for him, but not tonight. Not against <laughs> us. So, I Sorry, no, yeah. um, I was just going to say, I feel like that's very, it's just always a bittersweet moment when a player Definitely. or a coach comes back for like the, you know, to their home right. arena that they're used to. And I just, I don't know. I, I think that's really funny. And now a lot of players are just like, you know, I wish for the best for them, but maybe not tonight, you know? Right, right. So it's nice. It's nice that they still value him mm -hmm. as a coach Absolutely. and just to have that connection. Yeah. But the Flyers continue their home game thread tonight with the ultimate test against the Boston Bruins for a 7.30 p.m. Wednesday night rivalry. Mm -hmm. So we shall see. I know this will be a measuring stick for the Flyers. Yeah. This game in particular will be their measuring stick. They did okay against the Canucks. They showed out against the Seattle Kraken. Mm -hmm. Tonight, if they do well, we don't have as many concerns as we should. Going forward. So that's all I'm going to say, and we shall see how they do tonight. Yes. Um, <laughs> I miss Wednesday Night Rivalry Night, so I'm mm -hmm. glad they're back. Um, but I hate to say it, but the <laughs> Ben Simmons saga continues. Oh, my goodness. As much as we want to stop talking about Ben Simmons, we can't. It just it keeps going. Um, mm -hmm. Ben Simmons appeared at practice on Tuesday morning, but he was asked to leave 
by Sixers head coach Doc Rivers shortly after. Rivers stated his reasoning for asking Simmons to leave was because he was not contributing and being a distraction for the rest of the team. He seemed to have such a negative impact that teammate Joel Embiid stated, at this point, I don't even care about that man. He does whatever he wants. The Sixers left Philly Tuesday night seemingly without their point guard. They are slated to kick off their season opener in New Orleans on tonight um, with or without Ben Simmons. And you know what? Good for them. Yep. Good for them. Yeah, he will not play tonight. Um, you know, due just to his composure and, you know, his, his moods. I think, his moods yeah. during practice. Honestly, the fact that Joel Embiid said, I don't care about him, just right. speaks volumes. And, like, he was saying that he doesn't want to babysit him. Like, good. Yeah. Good. He, I'm good for him for saying that because I think the t- whole entire team should be very annoyed. I I wouldn't want a teammate like that. I wouldn't right. want to be his teammate. Yeah, and it, it speaks volumes because they were so tight, like seemingly tight at least, mm-hmm. um, on and off of the court. Mm-hmm. And I guess Joel Embiid just feels kind of backstabbed yep. when you don't have that kind of, you know, present. Like Ben Simmons, I don't know, he just – he doesn't want to be there, and when you don't want to be yeah. there, you kind of can't shake it, I guess. When you have your mind made up already, it's just probably no turning back. So the Sixers are either, either going to have to part ways or, I don't know, that looks like to me to be the only option at this point. I think that would be the best for the Sixers and the best for the city of Philadelphia, for mm-hmm. Ben, for Ben's sake. Yeah. Um, I just think it's like a stab in the back. Like, Joel Embiid wanted to go out to him, and like yeah. remember, he, they were he was yeah. trying to get him to come back, and then he said, "Nope, you showed up, and you right. clearly don't want to be a part right. of this team." You can only beg for so long, but I-, I can sure tell you that our athletes here at Newman University, they're here to play and they're here to stay. Oh yeah. Starting off, the Newman University softball team has welcomed a new head coach in Shannon Padula. Padula arrives to Newman after a five-year stint as the head coach at University of the Sciences in Philadelphia, where she coached at the Division II level. On the other side of things, women's soccer travels to Immaculata today for a matchup against the Mighty Max to continue conference play at 4 p.m. They are also set to host Marymount University on Saturday for a 1 o'clock p.m. matchup. What do we got for men's soccer? The men's soccer flips the script and takes on Immaculata at home at 6 p.m. tonight before they travel to Marymount on Saturday for a match at once. So lots of conference play, which is the most exciting Mm -hmm. part of the season, I have to say. Well, women's volleyball hosts Gwennon tonight on home court, so head over to the Miranda Center to catch the action at 7. Make sure to check out New Game Plus with our fellow friends Amanda, AJ, and Ryan tomorrow, as well as the Newman Update is officially back and will be airing at 3.30 Friday afternoon. I have a feeling you will not want to miss it. I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Catch you next Wednesday.